I am half past giving a shit. Here are 19 reasons to watch Dolores Claiborne. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram, and this is a place where I talk to you about all things Stephen King. And today we are continuing our chronological walk through the movies and adaptations of Stephen King's work. We're still in 1995, and we are covering one of my favorites, Dolores Claiborne. So we're going to get to 19 Reasons to Watch That in a moment. Just a quick reminder that you can find links to my quiz book, to my published fiction, to my newsletter, and some other stuff in the description. Any support you can give there would be really appreciated, but just you being here watching this is absolutely plenty. So let's crack on with Dolores Claiborne, shall we? So this one from 1995, as I said, based on the 1992 novel of the same name, Dolores Claiborne, Directed by, starring Kathy Bates, Jennifer Jason Leigh, Christopher Plummer. This is an underrated crackerjack of a movie. I'm really excited to talk to you about today and give you my 19 reasons to watch it. Now, as always with these videos, any reasons that might spoil a first time watch, I will hide behind a spoiler alert and save them to the end. So at that point you can bail or you can just use the timestamp in the description to skip to the outro and not have a first time watch ruined for you. But there will be reasons at the start that'll be relevant whether you've seen it or not. So stick around, see how far you get. So at the time of recording, this one is available to buy and rent on a bunch of places, including right here on YouTube. And whereas last time on The Mangler, I was not advocating paying money for The Mangler, this time, absolutely, if you haven't seen Dolores Claiborne before, it is worth handing over a few pennies for. Definitely, definitely. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's get on the ferry, get across to that little island and explore 19 reasons to watch Dolores Claiborne. So my headline reason for you to watch this, this is a masterful, compelling and underrated drama and a truly wonderful adaptation of an equally wonderful novel. It's a great cast, great script, great photography, but most important, great performances all around. You will just, absolutely enjoy yourself watching this movie. So I know I normally don't jump into changes and differences from the novel until after the spoiler alert, but it's worth mentioning a couple here, just a couple of tweaks that do make a positive impact on the movie. So we get adult Selena, that's Jennifer Jason Lee's character, spending much more time on the island, and we get to focus on that mother-daughter relationship, which I think really works for how they're telling the story in this movie. And we see that unfold at the same time as we see the story unravel and we also have the added pressure of Christopher Plummer's detective character that is gives this kind of cat and mouse element to it you know both fairly big changes from the book that I wouldn't normally pull in here but I think they work really well for how the movie is framed and they make the movie even more watchable Christopher Plummer's character in particular he just manages to stay on the right side of silly if you get what I mean. This one was a bit of a sleeper hit, but it eventually took some big bucks at the box office and continues to sort of carve out a legacy today, mainly through word of mouth, really. And it's a movie that is perhaps not the most obvious if you're thinking, I want to go and watch a Stephen King movie tonight, but it's absolutely worth a punt. Like, if you haven't got this impression so far, I really like this film, and I think you will too. So for all that this is dark and depressing at times, in a good way, and it really is, this film also has plenty of charm. That was my attempt at a main accent, mainly because the main accent in the movie is not a caricature, which is probably what mine sounded like, crossed with a sheep, and also the photography is just wonderful. I'm doing any beauty pageants this week. Apologies any mainers watching. So what's the hook of this one? Well, Dolores Claiborne is our main character and she has been accused of murdering her elderly, very rich employer, Vera Donovan. Dolores's adult daughter, Selena, hears about this and returns to their home on Little Tall Island for the first time in 15 years. And we see them trying to work through their relationship and also try and work out exactly what happened. And we're not just working out what happened with Vera, we're also discovering what happened in Selena's youth and in Dolores' marriage to Selena's dad, Joe St. George. I say, well, shit, she may be ugly now, but you should have seen her when I was drinking. <laughs> the cast is excellent here, starting with Kathy Bates, who I'm sure I've read somewhere 
is basically who King had in mind to play Dolores Claiborne when he was writing the novel. Honestly, if you thought Kathy Bates was good in Misery, watch her in this. In fact, Kathy Bates herself calls this her favourite role of her career. Jennifer Jason Lee is equally wonderful as Selena. Like she's dressed as this grunge icon throughout, and she is dark, distant, cynical, bitter, broken. Just great. Then there's Christopher Plummer, who adds this element of danger throughout the entire movie. As I already mentioned, gives that cat and mouse element and just manages to stay as a put on the right side of silly. He's a threat and a presence throughout, and you never never are able to work out whether he's going to back off. Like, is he going to get what he wants? And that's one of the huge tensions in the film. And Judy Parfit as Vera is fantastic. I insist that all women who have hysterics in my drawing room call me by my Christian name. David Strathan as Joe St. George is horrible and brilliant. And there's even a young and sensible John C. Riley in there too. Like, talent everywhere in this cast, honestly. One thing I don't often talk about in these reasons, but has to be mentioned here, is the use of colour. It's really savvy. Bright, bold, vibrant colours for when we're looking back in the past. Really dour, desaturated grey for the present. Very simple, but very effective. So lastly, before spoilers, I'll say this one again. This is a heartfelt, brilliant adaptation of a book that you could describe in the same way. Like, if you haven't watched this before, change that. Get on it. Killed her. Okay, after this point, going to be talking about more similarities or differences to the book and picking out some of my favourite moments, favourite scenes, favourite lines, all of that kind of stuff. Things that might potentially ruin a first time watch. So consider this your spoiler alert. If you need to leave here, please do. You can either bail completely or you can jump ahead to the outro using the timestamp below. But otherwise, if you're sticking around, well, stick around because I've got a few more reasons for you to watch Dolores Claiborne coming right up. This one is broadly pretty faithful when it comes to the book, apart from changing the narrative style a little bit from Dolores' first person narration in the book to something that just works a bit better for watching a movie. And just like the book actually, it's also pretty bold. We get the truth of what happens with Vera an hour in, so we can focus during the second hour on the real story, Joe St. George. This one, for all that it's drama and it's got this photography that sucks you in and is compelling and heartfelt and all of those words I've used already. It doesn't flinch when it comes to the violence, like the mental violence, the mental abuse and the physical violence and physical abuse. Yeah, it doesn't shy away from those. Joe St. George in particular, one nasty piece of work. There are some great scenes throughout this movie. I especially love when Vera actually opens up to Dolores and we learn the truth about what happened to Vera's husband. Husbands die every day, Dolores. She is compassionate and compelling and utterly terrifying all at the same time in that scene. Brilliant. However, my favourite scene is all around the eclipse where we see Dolores make sure that Joe St. George ends up falling down that well. Just the colours and the lighting make it just look like this surrealist painting that has come to life and I just love it. As for my favourite line, well, I could go for the obvious one about being a bitch. Sometimes being a bitch is all a woman has to hang on. Or I could go for the one about being half past give a shit that I referenced right in the intro. Now you listen to me, Mr. Grand High Poobah of Upper Butt Crack. I'm just about half past give a shit with your fun and games. But that wouldn't be being true to myself. My favourite line in this is... Dolores' reaction to seeing her window has been smashed. Cheese and crackers. Cheese and crackers. Like, who says that? Love it. Okay, so on to connections to other King works. So obviously we've got the novel that this is based on, and Kathy Bates, of course. She was also in 1990's Misery and had an uncredited appearance in the 1994 miniseries at The Stand. But that's not it. Jennifer Jason Lee would later go on to be in the 2021 miniseries of Lisey's Story. And we also see Bob Gunton here playing the bank manager and he of course was the nasty warden in the Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption itself gets a mention from Dolores. The only thing you're gonna get is a long stretch in Shawshank prison. And while we're talking Shawshank, this one was made by Castle Rock Entertainment, who also made Shawshank and Evil Things, and Misery and just loads more. You know that by now, right? Lastly, let me just reiterate how good this is. I would go so far as to say it is a perfect 
autumn or winter watch. Has he fucked her? So there we go, my 19 reasons for you to watch Dolores Claiborne. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. Have you seen this? Are you a fan of this one? Has this one made you want to go and check it out? Let me know. And also do check the links in the description for links to my quiz book, to my fiction, newsletter, the Constant Writers podcast, all of those things. If you fancy supporting some of the other things I do, they're right there for you and waiting. But otherwise, thank you for coming along and checking out this video. Next time, get excited because it's our first book special of 2024.